Coffee. Hello, everybody. My name is Amol Patel. I'm in Los Angeles. You're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show, where we cover internet startups, marketing, design, monetization. I'm joined with... Hey, guys. I'm Jeff Peltman, and I'm down here in San Diego. Today is Thursday, April 4th. Yeah, so you can reach Jeff at, at Comster, and you can reach me at, at Amol underscore Patel. So, Jeff, uh, let's get right into the news. What's the big news, Jeff? Um, you tell me. Let's pull up the <laughs> tech. Uh, you know, I brought this up yesterday uh, that uh, Facebook's uh, new phone's coming out. It's not that interesting to me, but uh, it's certainly taking over the headlines. Well, um, this is a this is big big news uh, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> you know, I've I've said many times that uh, hardware is the is the fundamental building block to a platform's sort of dominance and you know we've seen this time and time again in the, in the 90s and the 80s where it was just Microsoft and Apple you know because they own the hardware no matter who wants to layer on top we've got the two hardware players um, you Microsoft? Know, Soft. Well Microsoft meaning you know they, they own the operating system you know so it, if you're dealing with uh, Windows or you're dealing well, it's not with, a hardware platform. A you're, you know what? That's platform. a very good point. You know, you're right. That isn't a very, that Microsoft, isn't a hardware platform. Right? But because, you know, you know, actually, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, but you could fast forward to Xbox, I guess. You, no, no, no. But I think that you bring up a very good point, and that is, even though Microsoft does not control the hardware, because they standardize all of the commodity hardware makers, you know, <laughs> Intel. Um, Acer, all these other companies had to build on their platform. It really ended up being a two-horse race, and uh, well, and almost isn't that kind of like what Android's doing? And that is it's what a, Android is doing. Yeah, and yeah. I think this is a well, I don't. Yeah, this is a fork off of Android. I'm assuming I haven't read all the news, but you know that's a good point. Uh, that's what they were alluding to days ago. That's a good point. So, so in this case, um, it right now it appears to be iOS and Android. You know, I know Windows has thrown their hat in the ring with the Windows Phone. I know they're getting into hardware, but uh, in my opinion, I, it, to me, this looks like a hardware play for Facebook trying to basically get closer and closer to the consumer so that, you know, so that they don't get knocked well, off that pedestal. Yeah, all these big companies have been heading this way, right? Um, what has Microsoft got besides the Xbox? They came out with the tablets of their own. Yeah. Uh, are, are they manufacturing their own phone, or is it just branded? Uh, you know uh, what? Like, That's I think um, I think I don't know if they're manufacturing it, but they do have their yeah. Windows Phone. So, so Google has Android, which is obviously just uh, you know uh, built by a lot of different companies, but they build their own Google Phone, right? Because yeah. they're like, hey, no one's doing it well enough, or whatever. Uh, which is interesting. Exactly. Uh, but again, uh, the platform, like you said, is what Facebook has, I think, found to be their value. Yeah. Uh, early on, they were like, okay, we've got the social network and the stream and whatever, but how do we harness it and not get beat by the competition? Yeah. Is yeah. to have a strong platform, right? The like most important thing, I think, that happened to Facebook was the app platform yeah. Uh, yeah. that brought all the developers on. And, you know, it's kind of like what happened with Twitter as an API. Yeah, I mean, we we've seen what happens when you don't own the platform. I mean, for example, let let's think about uh, Google here for a second. Now, uh, for for many years, uh, Apple iPhone users relied on Google Maps, and then uh, Apple, you know, decided, hey, you know, fuck them, uh, we're gonna come up with our own mapping software, and and they went ahead and pushed them out. I mean, uh, it's it's just you can also argue it might be a matter of time where Apple decides to buy a bunch of startups that are in the search space. And eventually, uh, Google gets knocked out even in search, mobile search. So um, obviously, mobile is the next big thing. Uh, we had uh, Max uh, on a couple of days ago, and he talked about how mobile is growing dramatically growing, yeah. from, from an advertiser perspective. It is growing mm -hmm. leaps and bounds over anything out there. So before you know it, mobile is going to be the platform. And I see that, that Facebook is obviously noticing that. And they probably have the stats on their own Facebook app. They probably know... That majority of the people right. are signing uh, are using Facebook using their app. I know my girlfriend does. Everything she does is usually through the Facebook app on her iPhone. So yeah, I mean you, they can see the trends and uh, you know they have a good uh, set of information so they can see how many people are iPhones and Androids and what the trends are, right? Which direction it's heading. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting articles I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago I saw uh, about Facebook's product team forcing themselves to. Uh, they like cut themselves off from their website for a couple weeks yeah. to only use the mobile apps uh, yeah. as a way to kind of like prove out that the apps can do everything that the 
you know, or to sort of restrain themselves in that way. Yeah. Uh, because it matters, right? Um, we've all been there. I mean, you can easily, when you're moving or when you're not near your desk or you get, you know, you're traveling or you get in those situations where all of a sudden you're not by your, your work, you know, computer or desk all the time. And right. uh, you can certainly pull out your phone and do most of the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. So uh, here's a little bit of a clip from Wherever We Go. But but what does this have to do with, with the hardware us. phone? I have Almost no idea. Almost every second of the day. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say that again. But but what this? Ha oh, maybe I'm sorry. I don't see the video you're playing. Yeah. Um. So I don't know what this has to do with a hardware video, or a hardware uh, phone. Well, uh, you know, I think if anything, Google is probably, or sorry, Facebook is probably hedging their bets. They fee you know, they figure that if if Google Plus, Google's social networking platform, eventually becomes the dominant social platform out there and with their android covering mobile space basically these guys their their bread and butter is advertising that's that's it that's where they make their money is through advertising and eyeballs so, and so i think i may have made the joke that well is there going to be a twitter phone like is twitter gonna you know they're buying up all of the apps that they had developers build for them yeah and then you know because basically because they need the eyeballs right yeah, if they, they don't get the eyeball space for the advertising yeah. then they're screwed yeah they're so screwed. like what are they gonna do like you know this is almost like dvds and stuff like you're gonna you know build the dvd player and the tv all into one thing so they can have drm and advertisements that you can't get away from right um right. you know same thing like is there gonna be a twitter device like a uh you know the comes with ads that you know you can't remove you know that's uh, a very it seems a it's a really strong uh <laughs> stretch but i think the point is the devices are getting so cheap right like yeah. you know facebook's like crap we bet we may as well get into this yeah, uh, yeah i think if you look back in history they've had a lot of partnerships with phones in the past right like probably back to like you know old like flip phone like you know kind of pre-smartphone even like integrations with facebook uh, but i think their threat is the android market which I assume if you get an Android phone, you log in with Google and yeah. boom, you're yeah. connected to YouTube, Google Plus, right. all your contacts, yeah. Yeah. plus everything else they yeah. offer. And, and, uh, and so that's what you're saying. And it's no Facebook's secret. It's, worried about. it's no secret that most people when they're, you know, photo photo sharing, media sharing is is the big uh, killer app on Facebook. You know, mm -hmm. I, I get a lot of crap in my news feed, but for the most part, it's the photos that get me to come back. And it's mm -hmm. these events that we go through, our friends and family and parties and what have you. And it's the photo sharing. That's why Facebook yeah. bought Instagram. It's photo sharing is the key. Yeah. Media you know, sharing. It, it, it sort of amazes me uh, the way that we look at like photo bookmarks, photos, video, and audio all like completely different beasts. But uh, YouTube just came out with a capture app for the iPhone okay. uh, to just make it really easy to capture YouTube videos. Uh, I feel like it, YouTube is kind of a superset over like all this media. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's surprising they're not doing photos um, alone, but uh, you know, they're definitely a threat for her Facebook. <laughs> yeah, and so if you think about it, Jeff, uh, the phone is the camera now. Everybody's camera, and so if you're using uh, Google's the Android point of capture for photos and videos, photo, audio, photo, which are, exactly photos and video. If you're capturing reality with this device, and now you're sharing the reality with all your friends and family. Uh, you know, you want to make sure you're the guy with the device. You know, Facebook uh, probably sees the writing on the wall. If they don't get in the mobile space in some hardware way, they may get edged out by Google with the Android platform because it's growing. Yeah, I wonder if it's too late. I'm curious where it's going to go from here. I think the touch uh, phone's got to change or evolve here. We've got the Google Glasses coming or yeah, and we you got know, the people talking happening. a lot about the, the idea of an Apple Watch. Uh, so... It'll be interesting to see what happens and how they're going to keep up with this race. Yeah, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see what happens. AT and T apparently is going to be their 4G LTE partner. Uh, very good, very good. I, I'm I'm a big fan of any of this stuff. I I love the fact that these these platforms are fragmenting and fragmenting, and more competitors are getting in and fucking everything up. I love it. More competitors <laughs> yeah, looking, better. I'm I would love a Twitter phone. I I think <laughs> I think I think the competition is great for consumers. Even though I'm an yeah, Apple fanboy. Uh, I love right. the fact that there's these massive, ta uh, you know, phone slash mini tablets out there now, and it hopefully it'll give Apple a run for their money and what have you. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to some of the other phones we mentioned too, coming from like Mozilla and oh, yeah. uh, some of the open source that, guys. That's right. That's right. Shot. <laughs> All right. So uh, with that, let, let's uh, get into our first uh, startup. Um, we're gonna cover Vero today. Uh, that's getvero.com. Um, so this is a all right. So here we are. 
So um, they've got a large banner on their site, and it's a guy uh, looking at his laptop, and at the top it says, send email to your customers based on their behavior. Track your customers' actions, send them individual emails, track conversions. As you know, Jeff, I'm a big fan of email. Uh, you know, you've probably heard me harping right. on this whole email <laughs> thing over and over again about startups building their list, about using notifications to bring them back to the startup. Uh, so when I saw this, this this just made me warm and fuzzy, Jeff. This just this is yeah. the kind of this is the kind of stuff so that gets me uh, happy, super happy. So the question here is why you need email remarketing. What is remarketing? So remarketing, I think, is a term that is from the display ad space, where when you go to a website and they've signed up for remarketing or retargeting, you know, you get mm -hmm. to see the ad all over the place. You know, that kind of follows you around. The I ad think, follows you around once they have attached onto you. So what does that mean in email? Well, I think in email, what they're saying, uh, what this is about is I, I think a lot of startups don't send enough email. I think the, the problem is is that the most startup founders tend to be developers, and developers are very sort of sensitive to <laughs> spam. Hey, man, the problem isn't always because it's developers. You're right. You're yeah. right. And I'm and I, maybe I'm harping to too that. much on the developers, but I just noticed that uh, developers are very uh, email averse. You know that one or two is enough, but more than that, they're kind of you know they tend to shy away from that. And uh, remarketing. I, I wouldn't say that, but I think that uh, what you're leading at is there needs to be more than just one email. There yes. needs to be like a whole series and a, a, a capture at the end. Absolutely, there needs to be an automated mechanism and a series. A focus of on email. conversion. Absolutely. So uh, here we've got another banner, another um, you know horizontal column saying, "Make more money from your customers. Set up automated remarketing emails that convert new customers or new visitors, and bring in old customers back again to purchase again." Uh, then below that, we've got make better decisions with real-time analytics, track your customers' actions, and see not only opens and clicks, but actually who converts from your emails. We've got a call to action: get started now. Below that, from first email to last, know your customers. See the full history of your customers' actions and emails that they've received all in one central location. Uh, when we ask our customers, here's what some of the nice things I said. So we've got a couple of testimonials. And then, um, let's see, most frequently asked questions. I already sent e newsletters to my customers. Why do I need Vero? Oh, I love that. So that was, that was actually the first thought I had, Jeff, is how is this any different from my MailChimp, right? Right. Or... or, or <clears throat> So uh, automating emails that are sent to your customers to drive conversions or return purchases is tricky. You, can, you can't set up these sorts of emails using a traditional ESP, email service provider, because you can't track what actions your customers take and tie them to emails. So somehow they're able to hmm. connect your startup or your site or your e-commerce or whatever it is that you're doing to specific actions that trigger emails. Right. Uh, it says behavioral targeting. Send emails based on customer behavior. Use event-based triggers to manage yeah. your campaigns. Yeah, yeah. So I'm curious. Uh, I think from what you just said before that was uh, that I think some of the triggers may be what's happening in the emails themselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Whether you opened or read an email or not. Right. Uh, and so I think the big obvious target is retention. Yeah. Uh, so services like uh, Mixpanel, I think, is the uh, the Y Combinator analytics uh, that does a great job of showing like uh, retention over time. Right. And so if you say, oh, they're dropping off after two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or you know the fifth day or whatever it is, you can set up like engaging messaging, right, to to reach them. Exactly. Uh, and and so I think the intelligence, the important factor here is having the information fed back into that loop. Yeah, which is uh, the the event based triggers like having that information. Did they open the email? Did they click on the link? Yeah, and, uh, or did they take the action on your website? And, and honestly, it's it's a it's kind of like a way of thinking about your your conversion funnel and your startup in general. How you can separate different functions, functionality within your app, and how you can set up different ways of educating or inspiring your customer base to try different things within your app and then when they pick these different options these things are events and then you know you can set up a whole email sequence based on that event I think all this stuff is part of the whole growth hacking you know thing um, so here we are at their pricing uh, you know yeah, section here down to the bottom of the page I like it's all on one page yeah I like the all well one design. page design um, I w the one issue I have with these guys is they they don't have a freemium option. I would have liked yeah. to have seen that, Jeff. I was going to say, uh, it says simple, no bull pricing. Uh, it is simply laid out. It does look a little expensive to me. 
no freemium option, so you can't dip your toe in and try it. Uh, yeah. The cheapest model here is fifty dollars a month. Right. Uh, Thirty thousand emails. Yeah. So you're gonna have to have a real need to use this. It looks like, uh, you know, or uh, like some, you know, you're already using something else, probably. Jeff, I can tell you, I can guarantee you that a, that if, if if you know what you're doing, this email uh, marketing, it can, you know, this fifty dollars is nothing compared to the return on that. So the 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 issue I have with this is but, that but you need to have the need for it already, right? I think all startups have the need to try to generate more ROI on their service, right? Every startup from day, has this. From day one, you think oh, absolutely. Uh, it's a good idea for a startup to come in and try this? Absolutely. I think every startup should should be using email marketing and, and drip campaigns and finding new triggers within their mm -hmm. within their uh, customer user flow. Um, so it, with that in mind, I would have liked to have seen sort of a smaller price point to get people to try it at least. They do yeah. have a no credit card canceling time 14-day free trial, which is great. So they do have that. And, okay, there it is. Uh, and yeah. I would have liked to have maybe seen some case studies. I don't know if they do have that on here. Uh, there is a knowledge base here, and there is a get started. But uh, I'm a huge fan of this kind of stuff. Um, I, I fundamentally believe that more startups need to be doing this kind of thing. Um, it's the key to growth. So, um, All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and rate them. I'm going to give them a four for design and marketing and survival, four or four. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, pretty much fours all the way around. I love this stuff. Yeah, it is actually a pretty uh, original idea, uh, I guess. Well, they're just taking email for their, uh, the idea of targeting uh, so specifically. You, hopefully, they're using those technical inputs mm -hmm. uh, to, to determine that. But, yeah, it seems pretty... Uh, uh, like a pretty uh, good idea, winner. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, uh, all right, so with that, let's move on to our next one here. Uh, we are going to cover Awesomatic. <laughs> all right, that's a great name. Yeah, what's this one all about? <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, here we are at awesomatic.com. Uh, we've got a uh, sort of a long, uh, wide uh, panel at the top here that says Empowering Community Support. Scale your efforts by harnessing your community. And then on the right, we've got a, an iPhone and a um, I, iMac. Desktop. That's yeah. A desktop that's showing. Um, it looks like some sort of horizontal scrolling interface, which, you know, I haven't been seeing a lot of. I know the new MySpace is using horizontal scrolling. Uh, it's a cool trend. I, I, I love anything that's a little bit different from the norm. And it looks like they have these sort of panels with threaded conversations uh, let me scroll down a little bit here. Open, engaging, scalable community support. Allow your customers, companies, companies, customers to evangelize your brand while staff supports urgent and personal issues. Okay, so this is sort of like a forum, I guess, for feedback. Am I getting that right, Jeff? Issues that you yeah. may be having. How is this different from a forum? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, so community support. So. Uh, I guess if you're a website, you typically have a feedback channel or a knowledge base, uh, customer support, uh, all these things, right? Uh, okay. So other examples of it we've seen are like user voice, uh, things like that to add a feedback tab plus right. more. Uh, yeah. It kind of opens up into a whole knowledge base uh, community. Right. These things are really important uh, for you know consumer products, I think, to right. uh, get the customers – Problem solved, and to get them, you know, the frequently asked questions. Maybe it, people have, you know, how do I reset my password? Like yeah, crap yeah. like this, you know, is all day, all the time. Uh, apps. If you look at, you know, like I do, your app updates on your phone. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're fixing bugs. Like it's like, oh, a bug for some person with some, you know, the old iPhone, right? Like, you know, it's testing edge cases, and bugs do arise. And uh, software like this is important to sort of make it as easy as possible to. Uh, find the bugs and fix them and or you know find the customers issues well I have to say Jeff um, looking at this interface the design is beautifully beautifully done it's got that kind of flat design look that I really love um, mm -hmm. and there's the dashboard that you've got for the iPhone display and the way they're doing the horizontal scrolling if and nothing else it is a beta uh, you know beta if, access but. if nothing else if they're just simply taking the existing sort of user fo or user voice you know um, forum uh, type support software to another or another level, another iteration on that. I'm a big fan of that. Um, I would like to know what how they're different though. They do mention that they that they've got ways that the staff can kind of I guess 
pull conversations into private messages uh, that they can that managers can quickly access activity happening. Uh, that can segment customers and usage and more customized automated reporting. So maybe they've got some interesting ways of slicing and dicing uh, feedback uh, for the community leaders and what have you. So I'd love to learn more about this platform. I think it's a really cool idea uh, if they're taking feedback to 3.0, let's say, another iteration on that. Uh, so if you're listening out there, Automatic, please get in touch with us. We'd love to do an interview. Yeah, we're looking forward to see the release of this product. Uh, we're definitely on their list. So let, let's go. Let's add, and add ourselves to this list. So uh, here I went ahead and signed up for their beta. I'm going to cool. go ahead and, and, you know, of course, double opt in or single opt in. And hopefully mm -hmm. when I opt in, maybe they send me a sequence of emails learning, teaching me why they're different and h how they're, yeah. you know, better. And maybe there's a special offer or maybe there's some triggers within this thing and mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyways, and, Our, and, uh, yeah, so we're kind of getting to get off on a quick tangent, actually, that's something that uh, is near and dear to your heart. And hopefully we're going to bring into some future episodes, right? Once we're collecting some of these emails in our inbox, yeah. uh, and we may actually go over them as kind of a study of, uh, some of this email marketing uh, in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, I'm, I'm filtering them and tagging them within our email, within our Gmail, and then we'll, we'll kind of cover how these, some of these best startups are, what are the best practices and how they're educating their early adopters. So, all right. So with that, I think that ends our show. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Of course, uh, if you know anybody in the startup space and would love, uh, you know, we would love to have them on the show. Uh, please let them know that we're looking for interviews uh, with founders, ideally. Um, and um, you know, tell your friends and family about our show. We're still growing our audience. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to uh, get in touch with us. You can email us at info at smokinghotcoffee.com or reach Jeff at at Comster or me or at Amul underscore Patel. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for watching. And make sure to go to our website, smokinghotcoffee.com, and hit the subscribe button and find your favorite channel to follow us. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. All right. See you online.